Thank yes. you very much. Uh, a lot of what Richard told us um, are familiar also in the medical domain, how to share knowledge, how to share information, things like that. And I'm working in the medical domain and what I run in, into is that um, what I think is that knowledge exchange should be an ambiguous, it should be interchangeable and it should be trustworthy. Um, within the medical domain, these things are especially very important. Otherwise, people can get killed if you have improper information. So just a, a disclaimer, it's just a presentation of my own personal experience. I want to connect to the from a professional side to a technical side. And I want to do that by communication with professionals of all disciplines, because I think communicate on topics like this, which is all about knowledge, all about experiences, is the best to, to improve the situation. I start off with who am I, because then maybe you can get a small impression uh, who you're talking with. I'm a clinical chemist. This is my hospital in Delft. This is my working domain. There's no RT seen here. And this is my office I work uh, <laughs> long days in. And um, what I'm doing is giving consultants to, to physicians, to hospital doctors, uh, general practitioners, questions like, how can I, can you help me to interpret things? Um, another thing we have to do is to, 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 to warrant valid diagnostic protocols of products. So we have to be in charge of our diagnostics. And finally, we also do some research to understand what we are doing and to improve our products. And finally, in spare time, I left, uh, I do uh, a hobby is the uh, semantical digital workspace, because I think what I'm doing is stupid. It's doing the same things again and again, and maybe computers can take it over in a better way. But how to change my mind, my knowledge into the digital world is another thing. And that's the one what I want to talk about. What I need is information to work with, and um, I have learned to interpret information. And my knowledge is, um, can, with my knowledge of this, you know, I can uh, model a, uh, a something based on the learned information. And because we are all human and intelligence, we can apply this knowledge. This is nothing new, this is uh, human based but it's also computer-based. It's similar, and that's the semantic web all about. And what are my uh, information sources, uh, resources? My brain is, I think, one of the most important part of my resources because I can remember knowledge and can remember facts. But also there's real life uh, books. I work with textbooks. I work with guidelines from authority uh, bodies, I work with articles, obtained from uh, the internet and uh, publishers and choose a PubMed for this to gain new information and also outside of the knowledge expert knowledge environment I use the internet to get searchable information that is what I'm working with but um, if you look at how good are these tools in my hands, and especially the digital tools. If you look at what curated search engines is, these are very highly specialized uh, search engines optimized for medical searches, then what you can see is that 30, uh, that researches uh, take 50% of the time to find articles, and only 50% of the time to read the information in the articles. And what research says is that only 50% of these articles are useful and um, they also and that's uh, also a fact of life they don't trust in 60 percent of do trust only in 60 percent of numbers the outcomes of articles and actually you can draw the similar uh, conclusions for internet searches for document management system uh, richard also talked about and medical guidelines to a lesser extent, because there's a lot of curation going on in the medical guidelines. But 
actually in all documents we are working with, we have these problems and actually all the information we work with, we do a lot of time finding information and to, um, it, it takes a long time to get the information and to, to and we take only a little time to understand what's in the article. And this has to be improved because it's inefficient, it's not selective and it's not trustable. And then I want to take you with me in the in, in the journey I, I um, do last years. How can we um, use the, uh, the semantic tools to improve this situation for me? But there are some uh, prerequisites for that before we start. Um, to find information, it should be very efficient, selective, and the information must be um, unambiguous and especially trustworthy. To generate information, processing information myself, it should be fair. On a data level, it's called uh, findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable, but that's not the big thing uh, for us. The most important thing is that at the knowledge level, it should be federated and artificial intelligence uh, ready. And on the application side, uh, we have to trace, uh, to, should be traceable to, to, to uh, know where information is coming from. But actually all these things apply to all the steps we are taking. Um, I first started off with um, uh, how to, to, to get more structure in tabulated information because I thought, well, that would be a very nice starting point. Because I thought, well, these is our tables are stru uh, very structured and these are very simple statements. So it should be not a big deal to, to make it a more semantical thing. And um, the purpose for this is to, 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 to recover locally stored, uh, but very variable uh, information, which otherwise is not published. But the first thing, uh, observation was that uh, all the data we got is 3D data because it's dark. It's, if you have an Excel file, you don't understand what's standing there after a year. It's dumb because you don't um, um, actually understand what's, uh, what, what you are there in the fields, what they mean. And finally, it's somewhere in a dungeon and you're looking around and you don't find them again. So um, this is um, one small part of a uh, data set uh, which is used to, to describe the reference value of, of a uh, biomarker. And I don't want to run into details, but you see a lot of fields which can influence the value of a marker in a certain population. So if you want to use very express data sets, these are not simple. And a lot of properties, relations and facets and constraints has to be dealt with. And um, you have to also to be aware of that these data can be combined with other data sets from other hospitals. Uh, so federation of data is a very important thing and that strongly relies in my opinion on a solid term definitions. Otherwise you get very uh, noisy data sets if you combine them. Uh, if you don't know if there's a female and a male are merged in a data set, you don't understand what the reference values are for females and males. So I want to run into uh, the ontology concepts. I read this nice book and I thought, well, I understand something, but it was a steep learning curve with all kinds of jumbo jumbo you have to understand afterwards. But still, um, you can come up with an observation that is statements are of a subject, predicate, and object type and uh, to, to, to define items, uh, properties, and relations. But this also uh, means that you have a very structured but very rigid uh, uh, expression concept. And it might be working very well for tabulated data models, but it's very much less suited for encyclopedic content like in Wikipedia. So that's one thing, okay, it might work, but if you go into, <laughs> as a user, I got the uh, Prodigy, which is a very well-known and renowned uh, editor for ontologies, and go to our grad, I got these left, right, right side uh, user interfaces. 
And as a um, domain expert, knowing uh, the, 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 the concepts, um, my skills are just MS Word, and I'm not an information engineer having property skills. So this is a very steep something for me to, to, to understand why I want to use this to express them something I can express in, in Word. Being a domain expert and being an information engineer is something similar to what Max Verstappen, which is a, somebody who drives cars, he is experienced to driving in cars and something completely different uh, compared to engineers. And I feel I got in the same situation. If I want to drive this car as a Max Verstappen, I have to be an engineer, which is silly to, to think. If you go to what ontologies are around, then you have all kinds of ontologies. And one important portal for getting uh, bioontologies is, is, is a bioportal. You, you can extract a, uh, a, an ontology like a bioassay ontology, and you can play around with it. But what I, my observation in this is that many ontologies uh, are there around and that they describe the same thing differently, making it a little bit of mumbo jumbo to, to, to select a correct uh, ontology of part of ontology. And also many ontologies are unfinished and products of PhD studies and really do not reflect my world uh, of uh, healthcare. And finally, uh, you see that lots of ontologies are not maintained by subject matter experts in healthcare. And uh, also you see like uh, SNOMAT, which is a very big uh, thing within the healthcare as an ontology. It only has a very coarse granularity. That means that you only can express very coarsely your information. So you have a low expressiveness and a high ambiguity, which is not nice to have if you want to express something more detailed. And mapping is not the way around, which is seen a lot in wiki base and wiki data environment. You map a lot of schemata and hope for the best. But if you combine a coarse definition product with a fine definition product, the result is a coarse definition product, leaving you with an ambiguous uh, environment to work with. So mapping should be avoided from my point of view. And finally, which is what, what, what is very annoying to, 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 to see is that the healthcare workers, even the big data fans and so on, are not aware of the existence of ontologies. That makes it very difficult to, to, to introduce this concept. So that was my first um, uh, insight. And how should we uh, start? And that was also a question from the audience. How do you get starting with the semantic web technology? So you have to have to have advantages. People want to have the uh, already given um, criteria, ambiguousness. So governance of data, who sets what should be taken care of and trustworthiness, the provenance. If you go along in the uh, um, with with the information, you keep track of what is said. So. Um, Actually, ontologies is not the way to go at this moment. Uh, triple stores are not the way to go in, in, in healthcare to be of any interest uh, of healthcare professionals because they have to be, get more mature. And uh, in digital workspace, uh, people are not going to work with that, is my experience. There are too much constraints in, in a daily practice situation. And um, my suggestion is to start off with a little uh, less stringent con uh, approach and ontologize the content afterwards if you have more structure uh, put into the system. So this is something um, I'm playing around with. We are somewhere here. The goal is to get there and uh, uh, to the K3, which is something high. And this is the approach. So the approach is not to start off with triple stores and knowledge graphs, and other kinds of stuff, but start off with the more uh, uh, loosely connected things. And for this, we need three layers. One layer, and which is a very important layer, is the lexicological uh, layer where you put term definitions, which can be used in a triple store to say, hey, this is a uh, defined like this. 
or you can use it as a uh, controlled vocabulary within a more uh, let's, uh, in a more uh, encyclopedic environment. The importance is to define the uh, meaning of items. With the, most of the existing knowledge graphs I have seen, you have not this kind of definition. So it is an ambiguous knowledge graph. Not you have a very uh, strict connection with the, uh, with properties and relations, but what they mean is not very clear defined. So you have some ambiguousness to uh, take care of. Um, the next layer um, is the encyclopedical layer. That is the way where you can uh, uh, create information. And that can be a hybrid of free text, including uh, controlled vocabulary in the form of transclusions and of tabulated. So you can use that more in the um, knowledge graph environment but it has to be a, a, a hybrid giving you the freedom of uh, text. Otherwise, people are putting a lot of uh, time in getting a triple uh, correct instead of expressing what they want. And finally, which is also very important because it's live stuff, it's if you have a protocol, then you have a protocol, but getting a protocol is a process of deliberation. And if you don't take care of the deliberation between uh, healthcare professionals, you get a uh, uh, big trouble. So these lexicological and, and encyclopedical layer or domains have to be embedded in a deliberation uh, layer, the community portals. So the most important first steps are um, getting a, a lexicological repository to get a controlled uh, uh, um, vocabulary and next to it a deliberation shell where you can communicate, where you can start off with to reduce the redundancy uh, of, of, of uh, items and ontologies by saying, well, you have defined my Kiwi is your Kiwi and things like that. But also it's very important if you change something within a, a system and people use it, you have to inform people that you're going to change it. If you're changing tubes in my hospital, people who are using this protocol should know that these tubes are going to be changed and I have to know they're ready for it. So this deliberation is nothing, not something only uh, on a contentual and, and creation thing, but it's also in the uh, utilization of the information. I want to show you a small if, uh, uh, example of where I'm talking about. If you look at Wikipedia uh, uh, in the Dutch version, uh, I live in Amersfoort, it's a nice city. If you come to this, I will join you, show you around. But here, what's the expression is that the information in these info boxes are different. The, uh, um, the area is, is different. It's not something nice. So Wikipedia as such doesn't work as a, a good uh, knowledge management information system. And actually, you want to have a, a repository uh, where you can define uh, your your item, for instance, your area, and um, with centralizing your um, definitions in a repository, you take care of your preference because you can put all this information to your uh, item. And um, what is a little bit of a challenge, there are a lot of um, authority bodies who have their own definitions and you have to pick one which is uh, used in, in this environment. But this selection process is also a pain in the, um, you know, what. Um, but if finally, if you have uh, come up with a, a centralized um, definition, you can transclude these uh, to all the places you want. I did it in, a, in an info box. You can also transclude this information or the definition as a word in, in, in the text. So then your uh, confidence is also warranted because it's also related to the uh, source. And transclusion, in my opinion, I, I appreciate it a lot because that can help you to, to, to uh, warrant uh, consistency and co cohesion within your uh, management inform of information. So I went into the Wikimedia family, but the observation is most of these uh, um, um, applications or uh, yeah, application environments are just unstructured plain text solutions. 
which is not very convenient. And uh, these are all independent environments, silos. You can use one in another. I haven't seen it. It's my personal experience. Maybe it's, it's possible, but it's not very clear to use it. And I find the Wikibase Wikidata uh, uh, layer very interesting for the lexicological layer and semantics media wiki for the encyclopedic area. And I tried to, to, to get some, some uh, connection between the Wikibase uh, environment to define things. Um, and the pros are that you have all the uh, term definitions, you have all the things you need uh, in, in place. And what's very nice to have is also it's multi-linguistics, so you can jump from language to language and you can uh, compare guidelines with each other. Um, and it makes nice bridges to triple stores. The cons are it's not very well structured for input um, and it's not really, really connected to uh, a, uh, as a controlled vocabulary with semantic web uh, media, wiki, media uh, semantic media wiki. Um, and uh, Jeroen de Douw has been working on semantic uh, wiki base, and there's no deviation layer in the support area. Um, and, and what I told you, uh, there are a lot of uh, other challenges to, to deal with, but that's outside of the thing. On the other hand, you can also use the semantic media wiki itself as a log logical repository by using transclusions. And the pros of this is that it's already integrated in the encyclopedic environment. It's user friendly. You can build all kinds of uh, structured editing things like templates and page forms. And also you can uh, use selection mechanisms to achieve relevant information. The cons, on the other hand, is not a definition and multilinguistic environment. It's not connected to the over, uh, data, uh, linked over data environment and it's not uh, have a, um, a mature deliberation layer in place. And finally, um, it takes a lot of experience to make it smart to get from Wikipedia environment to, into a semantic media wiki. So end users are still reluctant to use this environment. And what else has this to do with the guidelines? It has to do all everything with guidelines because all the stuff we talked about also apply to guidelines, and especially medical guidelines. And unfortunately, medical guidelines are not um, yeah, uh, what they should be uh, uh, trustworthy and things like that. And this uh, need is, is expressed in, in, in all layers of guideline, medical guidelines environments. The WHOs want to make smart guidelines. They're talking about a light scheme, as everybody does, but how to achieve this, that is put in the clouds, uh, actually. Um, and I want to go more in detail in the Dutch medical guidelines. That is, um, we have a, in, in, in Netherlands a uh, knowledge institute, which uh, maintain the uh, most of the Dutch medical guidelines. And this is part of the Federation of Medical Specialists where all the uh, okay, medical specialists are a member of. In the previous uh, environment, to, to, to show you how people can think, um, uh, all the guidelines were monodisciplinary. Each society had their own uh, guideline and we took care of that. And the last few years, these guidelines were transferred from their local things into a database as a HTML page and could be treated as a PDF. And where they are now working on is uh, to get a modular multidisciplinary guideline. Um, I come up with that, what's the difference? Um, and this is a game changer. Uh, we came from just plain paper work and we want to go into a modular multidisciplinary guideline where things like terminology consistency and coherency and findability uh, are more important than having your own paper-based uh, guidelines. And how to deal with that, that's the uh, process uh, the uh, Knowledge Institute is uh, working in and I'm involved in one of the projects, how you can change the original paper-based concepts and thing, uh, thoughts into a more modular uh, 
uh, multidisciplinary thing. And um, just to 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 um, to emphasize that it's not something uh, for some people like uh, semantic web or things like that. The survey on the users show that actually uh, things are not easily defined and uh, not uh, shop with a P, let's say. And uh, sometimes things are rather inconsistent and incoherent. So this is a, um, a confirmation of uh, what we have seen. Um, to show you, this is a traditional monodisciplinary guideline. An expert group is taking all the information, making a, a module where a question is asked, consider it, considerations done, recommendations are given, and the arguments why you have given these recommendations are also given. That's very simple. You put it into the um, uh, internet and the healthcare professionals can work with it. And you can also use some international guidelines and you also can use some other information, but that's the way to go. The uh, information streams are very similar, uh, simple and the processes are very simple. If you go to a multidisciplinary, more groups saying, and you go to a modular, you make smaller bits of information, you get a lot of interactions between all these groups um, because you want to have um, a consistent thing. If you say in module A, A and you say system uh, module B, something else, people who are working uh, professionally with these guidelines think that is not going wrong, good. And there are also more uh, user groups instead of only your only uh, uh, society members. So we have some big challenges that consistency in how to evaluate literature and how to be coherent between the uh, modules and how to consistent with your uh, users. So, um, but I um, want to, 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 to express is that even though there are beautiful tools around like um, Semantic Media Week and Semantic Web technology, our healthcare community is insufficient aware of the Semantic Web solutions. If I go into the field, then uh, and I'm talking about transclusion, I have to do a lot of work to, to, to make people understand what a transclusion is and how it can help. And then they say, oh, that's a smart option. And it's like John uh, Johan Cruyff who said, you don't see it until you realize it. And that's one of the things you, uh, we have to, to, to achieve is that people who are going to work with this kind of tools have to know what's in for them, like um, in the transclusions, which can lead to reusability of information and things like that. So where I'm, why I'm here, I want to, to make bridges between the developers of functions, these uh, the semantic web developers, to make functional tools, sustainable tools, and outreaches to, to, to uh, users with uh, user cases. And on the other hand, the users have to understand the function by education, by training, and by changing concepts, by showing around what you can do with it. So we have played around uh, with, with, with transclusions and term definitions and people understand, now understand, hey, this might be something very interesting for us and we are now doing some projects exploring uh, what to do. And one of the most important thing is how can you put your lexicological framework into a, uh, the, uh, the encyclopedic area uh, at the uh, editor interface? How can you merge uh, your your controlled for vocabulary into your um, in your encyclopedic environment um, and other things like how, how and, and these are tools which are uh, already uh, usable but things we have to work with is how can you optimize categories and properties to optimize searches and things like that and I'm very grateful to Hoops put them where uh, to Karsten Hofmeyer and Johan de Dau who are helped me a lot with uh, understanding these concepts because it's very hard for a healthcare professional not knowing anything about RT to understand how things are done, even you understand what you want. So there are also other things you have to take care uh, about. 
of uh, like um, how do you things like versioning? How can you work with concepts in process uh, and published and archive status in process? How can you deal with multilinguicity and publications? How can how will this system work in on scalability and things like that? These are more technical things, but uh, I think it should be very to be addressed uh, prior to you go, you start with this concept. So um, to finalize with the last slide is, um, and that's why I'm sitting here. There are a lot of many insights for me uh, at least are to be gained, and many choices have to be made, which may might have a lot of consequences for further development if you make a choice which is wrong you have to uh, stop your development or you have to change so making the correct choices at the right time is a very important uh, feature and also i think there uh, has to be uh, built a lot of features not uh, only uh, to 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 help uh, users to uh, to achieve their functionalities so we're now working on a uh, the preparation of a project uh, to make a, a living lab on semantic guidelines. And my question to this community, um, it's, it's a hobby for me, but I would really uh, appreciate if people could help me with publicly accessible examples of knowledge management systems, uh, which can show the, the, the power of uh, semantical web uh, tools. I also uh, struggle with how to deal with the information around. Where can I find the information I need to understand the functionality of extensions of the Semantic Media Wiki? There's a lot of uh, information going around, but it's going in too much depth for a end user. And it, I would be very uh, pleased if I have some information I can pass around to my colleagues to understand what's happening. And of course, I really would like to have people around with great ideas how to deploy this, this environment. And uh, finally, maybe people want to help this showcase and, and, and get, uh, for a, a pilot. So um, this was just a brief overview of what I'm working with. And in depth, the uh, discussions are very well appreciated, not at this moment maybe, but maybe later on. And for this, I have put my contact information here. Um, and yeah, hopefully, uh, Semantic Web uh, will um, get into uh, the uh, healthcare guideline system. And uh, from there, we go further in uh, other knowledge management systems because I believe this is the way to go. Thank you very much for your attention. And I'm willing to take. Uh, uh, questions yes uh, thank you very much uh, it was a, a very nice talk very well fitting after your after our, our keynote talk so yeah. thank you for that um, since you have uh, posed now questions to the community uh, and we are running a little bit out of time here um, I also expect that there will be questions to you um, so my suggestion would be uh, if you are if you are here during the during the next days of the conference, yeah. maybe maybe you can use the event chat to uh, to find some time slot where where you will maybe be available in the hack space or in the Vienna coffee house or so for yeah. for 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 for, for, for trying to answer your questions and for questions from the yeah. audience to you. That would be great because yeah. then we could. We could go on with the with the next talk now, and yep. um, uh, you will you you, you could uh, in the event chat just say you know I will be around during this and that break maybe tomorrow or today or after the conference at this time uh, in this venue, and then we can meet up and and uh, follow up on uh, on very interesting um, uh, aspects and questions that you raised. Thank thank so you very if, much, and I uh, hope that we come further with this uh, beautiful environment. Thank you, Arch. Okay. Thank you very much, Franz.